All right. Welcome to the Rise Up Podcast. I'm your host, Jonah Mitchell. On this show, I do my best to help simplify everything that goes in the process of losing weight, improving your body composition, uh, gaining confidence, and really just sifting through all the BS that's out there uh, in the industry that makes this a lot harder than it needs to be, ultimately helping you get out of your own way and creating results that last. And I, uh, I appreciate you being here. Uh, really excited to talk about today's topic uh, because I think it encapsulates, encap- encapsulates? I don't know if that's the right word or the right way of saying that, uh, but we're going to go with it for, we're going to go with it right now. Um, especially if you're, uh, if you read the title of this episode, um, essentially, uh, how you know (laughs) when it's time to give up now, I like saying stuff like this because everything has a gray area, right? This is why I try to help people understand there's no good or bad. Um, and, there's no good or bad about any types of food or uh, situations. It's just about or about our behaviors. It's just about where they fit or if they align or or misalign with our goals. And when it comes to understanding when it's time for you to give up is really understanding, well, what's going on? <laughs> what's the goal? And what is your approach? How are you going about getting your results? And is your approach appropriate? Because there is a time that you should give up on the approach. I don't, I do not ever mean you should give up altogether. I don't want you to settle for your results. I want you to evaluate. I want you to understand. I want you to ultimately just be honest with yourself. There's a lot of things that we end up trapping ourselves in that may not work, but we think it has to be this way. And then we get stuck in this pattern. We think it has to get this way or be this way. We don't see the results. We invest a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money into an approach, and it's not working the way that we thought it was supposed to. Then we get frustrated with the lack of results, and then we settle. We settle for where we're at. I actually just had a conversation with... um, uh, kind of a conversation, just, you know, this is something I really help my clients understand uh, when it comes to this kind of relationship, this kind of situation. A lot of it's just in our heads. And I really want you, before I kind of dive into when when it's time to give up on your approach, I want you to take a time, I want you to really understand the relationship that you have with yourself and, and pay attention to the voices in your head that are speaking. Because a lot of times the voice that makes us feel down, makes us forget why all this matters to begin with, that gets very discouraged and feels like a failure for a lack of results or a lack of success. That's telling you that the only best option is to just settle and stay here and not really thrive. There's a reason that 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 you have that that voice in your head. There's a reason that it has become your way of th- thinking. And I want you to start paying attention to it and where it may have come from, right? How often, more importantly, before actually, yeah, way more importantly than where it came from, how often does it pop up? Because like I was saying, I had a, like a, got a message from one of my clients who'd been working on this, who has been working on this a lot. And she today, or the last few days has been having a really, really, really hard time. A lot of things have triggered her old way of thinking. What I mean by that is when we first started talking about six, six and a half months ago, um, or started coaching together, she, she had a very big fear or a very big misconception that she just needed to get better at tracking. Um, and that's why she was always uncomfortable, lacked confidence and really had a hard time staying consistent. But the reality, she's never, ever been like just comfortable with things not being organized or controlled (laughs) like anytime life would get in the way she would always use it as a reason for her to not not even try um and they get frustrated and blame her lack of results on her excuses when in reality she the 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 situation that was going on her head based off her past experiences based off of this possibility that you know she's she's seeing results because she's tracking but like it kind of stalled out and now this part of her uh this negative voice in her head is telling her all these things that it has to be, it has to, in, in, it has to be this way, it has to be this way. And if it's not this way, you're failing, or you know, you're never gonna have the results that you want. You're always gonna come up short. You're always gonna be who you are, and that sucks. That's a horrible relationship to have with ourselves. 
And we've we've done a lot of work to help her understand that voice, that relationship that she's had with herself and really make room for who she wanted to be. Because that version of her, you know, th- this negative side, I want I want everyone to understand it's not a bad thing. All right. Even though it makes us feel bad, <laughs> makes us feel not that great on the inside. It is there because it's trying to protect us. And what I mean by that is our brain, our body. If you're a long time listener, if you're new, uh, you, you know this, if you're a new listener, well, I, I want you to understand that change is hard for a reason. Change biologically to our brain, to our body meant something was unknown. And if something was unknown, it usually led to us dying biologically, right? Because our body and our mind, our central nervous system has not evolved to the way that we live in 2023. It still thinks we're hunter gatherer times. It takes millions of years to evolve. So it took millions of years for our, our brain, and our body to understand what it took to survive as a human on this planet. And as we've evolved technologically rapidly over the last couple centuries, our body still thinks it has to hunt, it has to gather. Every stress is a is a survival or a fight or flight response. Like something's coming to something's gonna kill us. Because our body's number one job or number one goal is to keep us alive. So when we develop this negative feedback loop or this negative voice in our head, it's <laughs> it's somewhat of a manifestation of our of our biology that's trying to keep us safe. Now there's multiple levels to this. And I do not have enough time to go over all of them, but I just want you to understand that if you want more understanding about like self-talk, I'm sure I have a few episodes in the, in the back uh, that will really go into a deep dive on that stuff. But essentially this voice in her head was trying to keep her safe because safe is what is comfortable, what is known and what is known a lot of times is us being super negative and down on ourselves. And even though that sucks and we don't like feeling that way, our body knows it. It's comfortable with being uncomfortable. Even if we know the changes that we want to make will make us happier, will make us feel better. Our brain sees it as a the, that opportunity for change as something that it's not certain about. So it's going to do everything it can to stay where it's at. And that's where this conversation really kind of started because she had a hard time. Uh, she's like, we, we made a switch and we wanted, we felt like we were in much more control of, of her, of her, her, of her life and controlling the controllables, right? She still can't control everything, but she's more comfortable with feeling content with what she can control. And because of that, it opened the door for her understanding what the next step to getting to her results were. And uh, that was taking the next step. Like, okay, now I control what I can control. I go back to my routine and I and I don't let things affect me as much. That's awesome. Now I want to start approaching the physical changes that I want to see. That's great. Now we can look at it. However, when we did that or when she started to try that, we, started, we, had, we talked about the things that we un- need to understand. Like if we want to see physical changes, we need to know where we're currently at. We need to know how clothes fit, how our body looks where our body's at on the scale so that we can measure if what we're doing is working, you know, but we were not aware that this may have triggered something in her that would bring back that negative voice because tracking data, tracking information to her, to her negative voice is a admittance to how far away she is instead of where she is and what she gets to do, right? Because it's, again, our brain cares about survival cares about staying alive and if we trigger something that makes us feel those things those uh those stressors that we usually have the the, the tough relationship that we have with ourselves if it starts triggering those that are, are triggering those responses our brain even though we do a lot of work to get in a better place mentally our brain will still go back to those beliefs though that way of thinking because it's comfortable okay so i say all this because once we understand that, once we understand this relationship that we have with ourselves and understand that it doesn't just go away and it's, it's there for a reason, right? We get to look at and see our approaches uh, uh, or how we approach based off our mindset or based our, around our mentality and say, is this actually what we want to be doing? Is this actually going to give us the results that we want, right? Because it's not just about the scale. It's not just about looking better, right? What is our life going to be like? After the weight is gone, do we always want to respond negatively to the scale? Do we always want to feel uncomfortable in our skin? Do we always want to be so negative and down on ourselves? Or do we always want to be so fearful of our food choices? Because a lot of times we will fearful of our food choices. 
Uh, do we always want to kill ourselves to see our results? Do we want to go to the gym every single day just to see the number on the scale go down? A lot of times when we ask ourselves these questions, we start looking at what we're doing and realize that it's completely contradictory to how we want to live our lives. This is something that we need to really be honest with ourselves. Get Go back to clarity. Do we always want to have the same response that we currently have? How likely are we going to keep our results if we if we keep having the same response? If we keep doing the same approach that makes us feel the same thing over and over and over again, we're only perpetuating the fact that, one, it's not working, and two, it's going to make it harder to remember why any of this even matters. Because you're gonna, we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. And if we're constantly reminded of how much we lack, how much it's not working, well, then we're going to lose sight of everything that we want. Again, it's not it's not entirely your fault. There's a part of biology that we don't understand. You're not all you were not always a negative person towards yourself. You were not always this so uh, headstrong when it comes to something that just makes your life miserable. You were given it from something or someone, and because you're stuck in the loop, and it's hard for you to see the results that you want. You know, it, it's hard. It's really hard to see that that the the logical step or the or the uh, the thing that may make your life easier. Uh, it's harder to see those steps because we're just so stuck in the cycle. And then we then we then we give up on everything. When in reality, we just need to give up the approach and find a different approach. And it it comes back to clarity. It comes back to honesty. Right? What do we want? And do we always want to respond the way that we currently are? You just have to audit, give yourself an audit, right? Is this, can I see myself doing this until I'm 90? Can I see myself sticking with keto until I'm 90 years old? (laughs) If we would just think a few years ahead, right? This would probably make a lot of our short-term decisions uh, a lot, a lot less quick. (laughs) Because a lot of people who hop on the keto train, they will see rapid results pretty quickly. But then they often find out that living on a low carb diet is not as conducive to the way that they want to live their life. Always saying no to the party cake and the French fries and all the things that we genuinely enjoy enjoy as humans, but we just have had a hard time putting them in appropriate places in our lives. Well, now we can't have it. And now we're telling our brain that you can't have something over and over and over again. What do you think about? When you're constantly told you can't have something over and over and over again. Well, you think about the very thing that you can't have. Again, is this an approach that you want to live with for your results? If it is, now don't get me wrong. If you're willing to not touch certain foods for the rest of your life, by all means, do the thing. Do it. If it genuinely lights you up, do it. Because if you ask yourself this question, you say yes, Welcome to being a sane individual (laughs) because insanity, the definition, I still, I believe still, I've been basically saying this out since I was in high school is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And if we just started thinking a little bit further ahead about, okay, can I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? Because that's another thing that we need to really be honest about when we're looking at, okay, is it time for me to give up this approach? Because if we are doing something that it, we already see as a temporary change, it's going to make it really, really, really hard for that to stick in the long run. It's going to make it eventually, it's only inevitable, it's, it's, like it's like a ticking time bomb. Because once you stop doing that thing that you saw results before, it's going to come crashing down and you're going to be very upset. And you're going to have another little reminder in your head that you failed. And then you're going to try it again later. You're going to try it again when you're more motivated or when you have more time. No, this approach just isn't working. Right? Like my client, the approach that she had before when it was just like, I just got to keep tracking better. I got to keep tracking better. But she felt miserable on the inside. Even when she would lose weight, she would get discouraged because now she had to keep it up. And now this, again, this was just a, a back and forth in her own head. And then we had to say, okay, we need to step away from tracking. We need to step away from those things that perpetuate these feelings and change the approach, change the approach inwardly. What do you want to feel? How do you want to show up? What is it? What do you truly value? And what's going to be on the other side of this? 
Now we have that clarity. Now we have that honesty. Now we look at the approach and say, this is not actually working for me right now. And that's powerful. But it always comes back to clarity. Always. Because what, we f- what we're facing when we get stuck in these patterns that make us feel so much, so discouraged, so run down, like failures that we just end up giving up on our goals altogether. We just settle like this is, I guess this is as good as it's going to get because everything else is too hard or the approach I'm doing is too hard, right? If we, if we don't actually get clear, we're always going to stay stuck. It's going to be frustrating. So we need to get clear. We need to look at it and say, okay, this approach makes me feel worse. Now I want to look at why does it make me feel worse, right? There's so many reasons for it. But just for the example I use with, with my client, she did a lot of work. She felt really good. She was feeling so much better, but there's still a new layer that we just came to, right? We can do all those things. And because we, and just because we can do that, right? It doesn't mean that the problem will go away all the time. We still just have to be inquisitive. We still have to keep trying. And every time an approach doesn't work, I mean, there's there's other things that we need to really cl- clarify too. Like, are you patient enough? Are you being as honest as you say you are? Right? Because once we have once we clear those up, and if those if those things are are a yes, then we'll then we'll manage the, the the mental gymnastics that that come along with it as well. And this gives us the ability to actually see what your next manageable, what your real approach is going to be. Because every time you see it, you find an approach that doesn't work, you didn't fail. You didn't fail. You didn't fail. You actually learn something valuable about yourself that gives you the ability to find the next step in the right direction for you. This is necessary. The thing that isn't necessary is you quitting, truly quitting and settling because you failed quote unquote, so much that you looked at it and said, well, this is as good as it can be. That's not the reality that you want. That's not the example that you want to set. If you have kids, do you want them to settle for the results in their life because they failed so many times? No. If you had a spouse, do you want them to settle in their career or in their passions because they failed so many times? No, you want what's best for them. Why don't you want what's best for you? It's hard to remember that. Again, clarity, understanding, and honesty. Clarity on what you want. Understand why you're responding the way that you uh, the way. Understand why you're responding the way that you are, and then be really honest. You would want the best for your family. You would want the best for your friends. You want it's easy to not want the same for yourself because for some reason we treat ourselves as the exception because we know what we can go through. We've been through hard things and we were still successful during those times. But we don't give ourselves the full context of well, hindsight's 2020. In the past, it's the past. We can't go back. We can only deal with what's right in front of us right now. We can only do that when we understand and give ourselves the reminders. And we audit, is this actually working? Have we given it enough time? Are we doing something that genuinely makes us feel better? Or is it constantly perpetuating the same emotional responses that makes me feel worse? And do I always want to respond this way? Is this how I really want to maintain my results? Once you have all the, once you're able to ask yourself all these questions, I want to let you in on a little secret. You're never wrong. Seriously, you're never wrong when you get abundantly clear. You can go through this entire response, this questioning response, giving yourself the reminders and getting your absolute clarity. And you can say, you know what? I guess what I wanted wasn't actually that important. That's okay. You're not wrong. But oftentimes, that's a lie. <laughs> More often than not, that's a lie. Because deep down, We do want what we say we want. We just have to find a better approach. And settling isn't always, it doesn't always have to be the answer. Settling on the fact that the approach that you're currently doing isn't working, that's fine. But once you ask yourself, you get a clearer state of mind and you get logical instead of emotional, right? It's hard to not be emotional, especially with these kind of things. You just got to let the emotions out. 
and let them have their time in the sun. Get them out of your head because if we don't get them out of our head, they're going to bounce around and attach to everything and make quitting and settling sound far more enticing. But oftentimes when we st- when we don't let that continue to bounce around and just attach to every f- feeling that confirms the feelings that we're having, we get to explain back the logic of why the change is important, why we started this to begin with, and why the approach that we're currently doing needs to change. One more little example about this. I was doing a uh, – I did a uh, – Nutrition talk at a gym a couple of years ago, some sort of CrossFit slash like hit style boot camp type of gym. Um, essentially, the talk was about you know how food, how much, how many calories we actually burn, uh, breaking myths about how many, how much food you need to eat to lose weight, how stress and hormones are are impacted by the amount of our relationship with our food and the amount that we eat. Essentially, a big portion was helping people understand that, that they can eat a lot more than they think they can and still see results. And a woman, after I kind of gave the presentation, she asked the question like, okay, this is all very helpful, but what if you're just terrified of eating more? And I was like, what do you mean? She, she said, oh, I've just like the concept that I can eat 1900 calories when I've been told my entire life that I have to eat 1200 calories or less scares me. I was like, okay, totally valid. You know, so you're eating 1200 calories or less. Are you seeing the results that you want? Because obviously, this woman's at a boot camp, hit CrossFit, whatever thing was to lose weight. And she wasn't like overweight or obese, but you know, she wanted to look better. I assume because I I didn't, this was a public thing. I wasn't going to get super vulnerable and ask her all her most imper- personal questions. Uh, in front of all these people, but I asked her if what is what she's doing working? And she's like, no, it's not. I was like, so what then what do you have to lose? You know, because then, you know, to go, de- I should have what I really should have done in hindsight 2020 is ask her how long she's been struggling with this. And I would assume it's been years. All right. So we'll just say years. She, she, she answered and it's like, okay, do you want to continue to struggle years with that same thing? Or would you like to get to your goals and feel better because of it and and be able to maintain it? Because the current fear that you're having around not doing, not allowing more food into your diet isn't working. And you've been struggling it for this long. So what's what harm is it to try something different? But she was stuck in the process of she's been doing something a certain way for so long that the possibility of switching it up or switching the approach approach just wasn't there to her. This is what, um, uh, oh, what did Nick call it? The sunk, the sunk, uh, sunk cost fallacy, where you're, where you commit to something emotionally, financially, um, time, time wise, for so long with nothing to show for it that the, uh, the, the, the there's a reluctance to change the approach, um, even if it's harmful, harm, harmful or detrimental to what we, what we desire, what we want. So this woman was told or believed that the only way to see her results was the what she was currently doing. And she was so invested and didn't have any results that the possibility of doing something different horrified her. But it presumably goes against what she wanted to do, how she wanted to live her life. And that's what it comes back to. It always comes back to clarity. And this is why I communicate to my coaches when they're having a hard time with a client what does it come back? What it always comes back to what the client wants, you know, there's sometimes where it doesn't work out for, uh, or it's something that's not working for us as the, as the coach. And it sucks. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it when you have to deal with it by yourself. And I especially don't like it when I have to deal with it when, uh, when I'm working with someone, not because I don't, I like, I don't want you to have it, or I hate when my clients experience it, but it's more like, I just don't like them going through that because it's hard, but if it's going to happen, I'm glad I can be there to help them, you know, explain the logic back in, back into the situation, allow them to have the response and bring them back to what they want. And then look at the next step, the next approach that's going to be the most valuable. This is how you know when it's time to quit. When it's time to give up, I should say, give up on the approach. Is it giving you what you want? All of what you want. Because a lot, it's very easy to point at the scale and say, that's the only thing that I want. Well, if that's the case, I want you to think five years ahead. 
If you're doing something that's making you feel emotional, stressed out all the time, you're miserable, like you want to deal with that for five years just because the scale is going down, if that's if if it's a yes, more power to you. But if you want to, if you elaborate, say, no, well, I don't want to have this emotional response and feel miserable all the time and feel super restricted in my with my foods, like great, that gives us the ability to understand where the next step for you is and remind you what's more important so that we don't settle. So we don't give up on the actual reason that we're doing this. Give up on the approach. Yes. Give up on yourself entirely. No. Anytime you're having a hard time remembering that, what if your kid did the same thing? What if your spouse did the same thing? What if a family member did the same thing? Anyone you cared about, what if they gave up on, on something that they were truly passionate about that they knew would change their lives for good? What would you tell them? And then remember to turn that statement right around to you. Because even when you're at your results, even when you do a lot of work to feel better about those things, you'll still have these thoughts. You'll still have these emotions. You'll still have these responses. You'll just get better at talking yourself off the ledge. And I say that from experience. I say that just like my client who went back to her old her old men- mentality of or her old way of thinking. She's been working really hard and just had hit a speed bump that sent her back into an old pattern. And patterns are hard to break because we are habitual creatures. As someone like me who's been, you know, the wor- I guess I'm going to use this term in shape for a very long time, I still go back to the way of thinking that I'm not good enough, that I'm getting fat, that I'm super heavy, that I need to cut my calories. I need to do something that's super restrictive and not conducive to the way that I want to live my life. It still happens. But then we get to say, cool, is it true? <laughs> or was that just an old pattern trying to come back up and get in my way? So there is a time to quit. There is a time to give up. And it's the time to give up the approach that you think has to has to go a certain way. And if that is contradicting how you want to Get re- how do you want to live your life with your results? Then we need to find the new approach. And yes, whatever costs you put in the process that you were that you thought you had to do, it's okay. It's, it's better to sever ties with that sooner rather than later and get to your goals sooner and be able to sustain them for longer because you let go of what just doesn't serve you, what isn't working. Because it's not because your your body's broken and you're, you're always doing something wrong. It's because you got real by remembering why this even matters to begin with. You got really clear on the situation you, and you understood that the situation or the thing that you're doing doesn't align with the way that you want to live your life. It's very simple. On paper. And it's not always easy to go through that. But once you kind of see the patterns, this is what makes changes much more sustainable. So I'm going to end this one here. This is probably a little bit shorter, but I hope that made sense. I hope this starts clicking and making um, some connections to your head. That's always what I, I really love doing. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on my social media. All that's on uh, LinkedIn in the chat or the, 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 it's all linked below <laughs> with the episode. Um, and if this, if you found this episode helpful, and uh, you think it would help somebody, I really appreciate if you just share it with one person. Um, it really means the world to me to get to even help um, help you wherever you're, you're at. And as always, if I never get to speak with you directly, I hope I'm able to help you even in a small way on your journey. So um, yeah, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the next one.